Hi, my name is Melissa and I'm a year five MD PhD student from the University of Ottawa. And this video is on my personal journey to medicine. This video is with the Community of Support, which is a great resource for any students who identify in underrepresented groups in healthcare. Um, it's a great way to learn more about different healthcare fields, connect with people in those fields, and also receive some guidance on your applications. So uh, with that, if that's of interest, definitely check out the links in the description box below. So when I think about my personal journey to medicine, um, it started when I was pretty young. I don't think it's uncommon that if you come from a family of refugees, like is the case for myself, or from a family of immigrants, that you see your family interact with the healthcare system and the barriers that they encounter. And you can't help but wonder um, if you were part of that healthcare team, how would you navigate obstacles for those patients? Um, so that combined with just a general interest in science when I was younger, kind of made me think about healthcare and medicine a bit more. And then when I think about experiences that started to become relevant to my medical school application, it started as early as high school which is really crazy when you think about it because it was very, very long ago for me, especially, you know, when you apply for medicine, you can include things from the age of 16 and up. So um, there are things that I did in high school that ended up on my medical school application. Two things I think were pretty important that I did in high school. Um, the first one was volunteering at a community hospital, which is a great way to learn more about the hospital environment. I was in no way involved in anyone's healthcare. No one would want that or expect that from a high schooler, but I was there to support patients. So it was like during lunchtime, helping them out, as well as helping them engage in activities that were happening on the unit. Um, just all great chances to learn more about what a hospital is like. And also I think what was important was learning to interact with different personalities, whether it's from staff or um, the patients themselves. And being able to navigate conversations with people with those different personalities. Um, any opportunity to do that is pretty good for, for any career in healthcare, uh, including medicine. The second thing I did, weirdly enough, was science fairs. And this stemmed from the fact that I've never been athletically inclined, I've never been artistically inclined. So when it came time to think of activities to do, um, all I knew was that I liked science. And my high school was starting up science fairs, which was great for me. It was really fun. It was really nerdy. Um, but it was a great chance to kind of do a low stakes, very tiny at home research project. Um, coming up with an idea, doing the background research, coming up with a hypothesis, developing methods to test the hypothesis, analyzing results of the writing, the presenting. Um, what was also cool about the science fairs was that as I got a bit more senior, I could compete in larger scale competitions. The biggest being the Canada wide science fair, which I did one year. And that was a really cool opportunity. I got to stay in a dorm for a bit, basically I had to learn how to be independent and be responsible, adhere to a schedule. I had to learn how to uh, prepare and conduct myself in a professional way, um, basically present a spiel to judges and answer their questions. When I think back, it was essentially like a mini conference, which is kind of cool. And it was really, really awesome. What was also cool that stemmed from that was a few months after I did the Canada Wide Science Fair, I got a call saying that someone had nominated me to sit at a sponsored table of students to attend the Gardner Awards. And the Gardner Awards is a really prestigious Canadian science award. That was a mind blowing opportunity because it was my first exposure to real world scientists talking about their top tier work. It really broadened my perspective as to what a career in research could look like. The reason I bring that up is because I never found out who nominated me. So this is my thank you to the universe because that opportunity genuinely changed my life. But also it's just a good way to talk about how it's always good to be really engaged in any activity that you do. You never know what passions will spark, you'll never know what doors will open up. Um, so it's just good to be aware and to take, take it all in really. When it came time to undergrad, um, I did activities that are probably considered pretty standard for someone who was interested in medicine from the get-go. Um, I did some student advocacy group work, I did a bit of volunteer peer tutoring, also um, did some uh, TAing as well. And again, it's just all opportunities to showcase and to develop your communication skills, collaboration skills, your ability to teach, 
even, and also leadership wherever possible. And that's all good for any career, again, whether it's medicine or any healthcare career. The really important activity that I also did for me being an MD PhD student was research in undergrad. Um, I was really lucky. My first supervisor uh, took a chance on me when I just finished my first year of undergrad. It was an awesome opportunity. Uh, she's a clinician scientist. So I really got to see this interface of uh, being a clinician and as well as a researcher. And we always talk about when you're a clinician scientist, there's this paradigm of you encounter problems in the clinic and the patients uh, that you see, and you want to learn more about that. So you do your research and you revolve your research work around those problems. And then the results of that research can then be applied to improve patient care. So that was a really cool kind of phenomenon to see when I was an undergrad student and also kind of informed me that, okay, if I could make it in medicine, I would definitely want to incorporate some element of research into my career because it was just really, it was just a really fun dynamic to, to see that. When it came time to applying, um, I think I fell into a common mindset, especially because a lot of other students in my program were applying, where you think that applying in third year is better because you think possibly um, the earlier you apply, the earlier you get in, the earlier you get in, the earlier you finish and earlier is just better. And that mindset certainly works for people and it's no way wrong. But I think as with anything, sometimes when you fall too deep into a mindset or become too fixated with it, it becomes easy to lose sight of other opportunities that could happen. So what happened with me was I applied in third year and it did not work out. <laughs> I didn't receive any interview offers, which is pretty crushing when you put all this effort and your heart and your soul into an application only for it to not work out. Um, but if you find yourself in that position, I would just say that a lot of us have been there. You are certainly not alone and we all know it sucks. And you know, I never take the advice of apply again lightly. I know there's a financial cost to applying again. I know there's an emotional cost to applying again. Um, but it can come down to if you feel like one year is not your year and you have the means and ability to apply again, certainly try to apply again because you never know how your app can transform from one year to another and your outcomes can definitely change. With me, I was still in my undergraduate program. I had another year left, so I knew, okay, I would just apply again in fourth year to see how that would turn out. Applying in fourth year for me though, opened the door of trying to apply for MD PhD programs. Um, and I didn't take the decision lightly. The program can be long. It could be seven to nine years as opposed to a three to four year medical school program. But the more I thought about it, the more I knew that research was going to be a, a part of my career inevitably. And I figured it seemed right for me to try and start working on those research skills and developing those earlier in my training rather than putting it off until later. So I applied for MD-PhD programs and that's where I am today <laughs> and it worked out. So if I think back to what was different between third and fourth year, um, it could be a number of things. It was another year to stay engaged in some activities as well. It was also a good chance to, um, you know, be a bit more productive in my research and get another paper out. Also, sometimes it's just a chance to mature a little. The maturity can do wonders. It just broadens your worldview on things and helps you be prepared for medicine as well. Also, I talked to more people. I talked to more people about my application. I prepped with them. I prepped uh, interview practice with them. I think that all can help um, in any application. And that kind of think, makes me think of my uh, general takeaway too, that I found myself in a position where I was applying with a lot of other people to medicine. It can have its pros and cons. One negative side is that um, it can happen that there are different outcomes for different people. And it does really suck if the application process doesn't work out for you, but it works out for others. Um, if you're feeling disappointed and upset, know that that's very, very normal and very, very human and to be kind to yourself. And again, just stay motivated if you're able to apply again. The pro though is that you do have a network of people to bounce ideas off of and to keep you in check as you're applying. The medical school application process can be pretty heavy and there's a lot of little details that are very easy to freak out about. So it does help to have that network to just kind of, you know, comfort one another and to keep each other in check and on track as you apply. So with that, talking about support, um, if you're interested in more resources, definitely check out the community of support and also subscribe to our channel for more videos.
Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.